Okay, so in a previous video, we covered um, decomposing the vector A into a vector that lies along the x-axis, vector B, and a vector that lies uh, parallel to the y-axis, vector C. Uh, I should point out that one of the strengths of vectors is that you can, as long as you don't change their length or their orientation, you can place them wherever you want to on a coordinate system. And so, uh, I say parallel to the y-axis, I could just as easily have drawn C over here, uh, actually on the y-axis, but it's easier to see where we're going with it if I make the triangles, which is why I've put C where, where I have. Uh, and then we talked about unit vectors, which are vectors, very special vectors that lie uh, along axes and they have magnitude of 1, which in this case is my i hat which is my uh, unit vector in the x direction, my j hat, which is my unit vector in the y direction. And I'm able now to represent the vector a, not just with some pictures and some arrows, but mathematically as 5 units times i hat, which is 5 units in the x direction. Whatever my units are, meters, centimeters, light years, what have you, 5 units in the x direction is what 5 i hat means. 3 units in the y direction is what 3 j hat means. Uh, and I should mention the signs here. These are both positive, which is because I'm moving in the positive x direction, positive y direction. If I were to move in the negative y direction, uh, I would. this would be 5i minus 3j. If I were to move in the minus x direction, then I'd have a minus in front of the 5i. But the signs, just like always, tell you the direction. So, you know, whatever signs you assign to your coordinate system, uh, stick with them when you're creating these vector notations. Okay? So, why do we want to do this? Why is this useful? Well, you can already see I've formed a right triangle. So, as soon as I decompose the vector A into vectors that lie in the x and y direction, I have all of trigonometry at my disposal. I can uh, talk about angles. I can calculate angles. I can talk about slopes, I can talk about uh, all sorts of different things just by looking at the expression that I've drawn here, that I've written here, not even the picture that I've drawn. I don't even need a picture if I have that expression, and let me show you what I mean. Let me go to our new slide and, and duplicate what I have there. The vector a is equal to 5i plus 3j. So what if I don't have a picture? What if I'm just given this vector, 5i plus 3j, and someone tells me, well, what's this, or someone asks me, what's the slope of that vector? I, I need to know the slope of that. Well, I can just read it off. Remember, slope is rise over run, and I just look for where my rise is. I've got three units in the y direction, that's my rise. And then I've got five units in the x direction, that's my run. So I can immediately tell you that the slope of that vector is just three-fifths. What if someone asked me, well, what angle does that vector make with the x-axis? Well, uh, if you remember from trigonometry, the tangent function is um, the ad opposite side to an angle over the adjacent side. Right? Opposite over adjacent is the tangent function. So I can immediately, just by looking at this, say that my opposite side, if I'm talking, I guess I should look at the picture, if I'm talking about the angle theta here, because the question was, what angle does this make with the x-axis? That's the angle theta that I've written here. Um, so uh, I can immediately say, well, that's the opposite side over adjacent. Opposite to that is going to be my one going up, which is my y, and adjacent is going to be my one going horizontally, which is my x-axis. So I can immediately say that the tangent of theta is just equal to opposite over adjacent, right? <laughs> just like my slope. No big deal, my rise over run. And then I can take the inverse tangent of three-fifths and I can figure out what that angle is. Uh, somebody might ask me, well, what's the magnitude of this vector A? I mean, do I need to get out a ruler and measure it? And I should say, I should mention that if I've done this carefully, you absolutely can get out a ruler and measure it. If I've been very careful with my graphical representation, a ruler will tell you the magnitude. But let's say you don't have a ruler. And let's say you haven't drawn a picture. And somebody says, well, what's the magnitude of this guy? Well, I mean, if this is, uh, in, if the 5 is only in the x direction and the 3 is only in the y direction, then 
those two lines, those two vector components, that's a, that's a term you need to know, the components of vector A, uh, 5 in the x direction, 3 in the y direction, well, those components are going to form a right angle. And then I immediately go, aha, I have a right triangle. So the magnitude of A, which is typically written like this, absolute value, <laughs> those look like L's, sorry, I'm doing this with my finger, the absolute value of A is then just 5 squared, and whatever units are attached to that, plus 3 squared, quantity square root, right? That's just the Pythagorean theorem. Because notice, my vector A is my hypotenuse. I will say that uh, you won't always be looking for the hypotenuse, but in this case, and this is a large majority of the cases we're going to be doing, uh, the vector is going to, the original vector will form the hypotenuse of a right triangle um, that we will decompose by examining it and coming up with the x components and the y components. More often, we're going to be given in this form the x components and the y components and be asked to find the full vector. You can go either way, right? You can go through the trigonomet trigonometry functions to find the adjacent side and the opposite side, uh, and you can go through Pyth the Pythagorean theorem to find the um, the magnitude of the hypotenuse, which is in the vector. So just by decomposing it like that, I get a lot of stuff done. I get I'm I open up the whole machinery that I've developed in my pre-calculus or trigonometry classes uh, to being able to work with this vector. So the unit vectors, if you've never seen them before, might be kind of strange. Just remember that they have a magnitude of one. So um, you know, if, if the i vector here has a magnitude of 1 and I'm multiplying it by 5, then what I get out of that is a vector with a magnitude of 5. And that's exactly what I have. If I look at the vector b here, it's a vector with a magnitude of 5 because I multiplied 5 by 1, right? The magnitude of that vector is 1. So I multiply that by 5 and then I get this vector that's 5 units long. And you remember that the direction of i hat is always in the x direction. The direction of j hat is always in the y direction, and if you're in three dimensions, the direction of the k hat vector is always in three dimensions. I mentioned this in the last video, I'll say it here briefly in case you uh, have forgotten or didn't watch that. Um, alternative forms of these, let me go to a different page, some textbooks will write i hat as this x hat. I think that makes a lot more sense but we're going to follow the i hat convention because that's probably the one you will see the most. Then, of course, j hat is equal to y hat. Uh, k hat is then equal to z hat. And if you usually you find this in math textbooks, and uh, it just depends if older math textbooks use this a lot, some of the newer ones don't. Uh, some of them do, but sometimes you will see this written like this, e sub x hat, e sub y hat, e sub z hat. These are all the same thing. They're just called something different. i hats, x hats, and e sub x hats are all unit vectors lying along the x-axis with magnitude 1. All right, I hope this made some sense. In the next video, we're going to learn how to add vectors both uh, well, we'll see in one video how to add them graphically and one how to add them algebraically.